Coming up now on the Blessings Connection. Why don't you introspect? Why don't you look at yourself? Isn't it amazing how people live with a long handle broom and we always want to sweep the dirt off your neighbor's porch when your porch is nasty? Who is king? 
king and all powers. He receives a report from Hananiah, one of his brethren that came down from Jerusalem. They tell Nehemiah, Nehemiah, Jerusalem lieth in waste. The gates have been consumed with fire. The walls have been burned down. And God's people are now in a position of reproach. The Bible said that when Nehemiah received the report that his spirit was broken, that it broke down in tears when he thought about his homeland and the homeland of his fathers and the land where the sepulchres of his fathers died, that the city lieth in waste. He must have thought about the time when he heard stories from the forefathers about the grandeur and the beauty of Jerusalem, the city of Abib, the city of Salem, the city of the king. He must have thought about the importance of the city of Jerusalem and how the Messiah would come on down to the bloodline and one day go forth from the city of Bethlehem in Judea. He must have thought about the significance and the importance of the fact that God's people have not been consistent in doing what they're supposed to do. And so the Bible said the next day he goes before the king and the king sees something in him that he's never seen in him before. His confidence is sad and the king asks him, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? I've never seen you in this kind of condition before. And the old, old Nehemiah turns to the king and says, how can I be happy when the homeland of my father lies in waste? The place of my dad is sepulchre. The gates have been burned down. The walls have been crumbled to the ground. My people are approaching. Here I'm standing here serving you. My heart is broken. And the king said, well, what do you want me to do? Let me go back to Jerusalem. Let me rise and build. Let me go back and do what I can to take God's people back to where they used to be. Let me go back and offer my feeble service. I'm only one man, but let me do what I can do to build back the homeland of my fathers. And let me tell you something. Not only did Artaxerxes let him go, but he gave him letters to take to the king's forest so that he could take trees to build the wall. He also gave him letters of passageway so that nobody would bother him as he made the journey from Shushan back to Jerusalem, he gave him money and finances. So let me tell you something, church. God can reach down in your life and use a heathen that don't even know God in the part of the sin to be a blessing to your life. Amen. So, Nehemiah goes back. Listen to me, brother. What made him go back is that he analyzed the situation and he saw that they needed to change their focus. Brethren, sometimes your focus can become blurred without you realizing how blurred it is. It has nothing to do with whether you're a child of God or not. It has nothing to do with how much you love the Lord. It has nothing to do with whether you want to serve Him or not. Let me tell you something. The challenges of life, the problems of life, uh, the, 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 the stress and the pressure of life, poop in them, can cause your focus to become distorted so that you're not on God as you've been in the past. And what you want to do is you want to be honest with yourself. Stop analyzing me. Analyze yourself. Stop putting me under a microscope. Put your own life under the microscope. Stop analyzing me else. Analyze yourself. and the deacons and the Bible school teachers. Why don't you introspect? Why don't you look at yourself? Isn't it amazing how people live with a long handle broom and we always want to sweep the dirt off your neighbor's porch when your porch is nasty? <laughs> Trying to sweep my porch and your porch clean up 
care of your own. Take care of your house. Me and God will take care of my house. Y'all all right? Amen. can cause you to lose your focus. Mm. I'm going to tell you because I love you. I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm not trying to be condescending. Some of you this morning are not as focused as you give yourself credit for. All of the junk stuff and things of life can cause your God focus to become blue and distorted. But I want to quickly tell you, that without God, you're nothing. There's something else I need you to say. If we don't do the right thing right now, I'm not talking about those who come in into God knows after us. I'm talking about those of us that make up God knows right now. If we don't take care of our God business right now, we're going to affect the people that come behind. Yeah. Yeah. See, don't you get the history lesson? I, I gave you, I gave you hundreds of years of history this morning just to demonstrate the fact that if people don't do what they're supposed to do, the folk that come after them end up in exile. Yeah. 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 Come on, think with me. Right now. All of these returns, the first return, 605, the second return, the yeah. third return, these folk, many of which were born in captivity. They never knew what it was to worship God in the spirit and the truth. They never knew what it was to hear the Torah or the law read into their hearing. They never knew what it was to worship God according to the old covenant. They were born in exile. They never knew the beauty of the homeland of Jerusalem because they were not born in Jerusalem. They were born in exile. They had never before had an opportunity and a privilege to worship God in the spirit and the truth because the people that came before them did not take care of their God business. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Yes, now I'm getting ready to say something hard. Brace right. yourself. Yeah. Hold on to your view. Yeah. I'm sorry. Your chair. Yeah. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. There are two ages in this church. All right. right now. You got the wilderness membership. Yeah. See, the wilderness membership are the folk that built this building. They was in the wilderness. But God was meeting them by a pillar of fire and lighting the cloud smoke by the day. Y'all ain't gonna say that. God saw to it that they had the way with all to get where they're going. Even though some of y'all didn't think you were getting where you're going, you didn't know that all the time God was putting sandals on your feet, fetching your water from the rock. And that when you ran, ran into to, to the Red Sea, that God was going to part so you could go over on dry land. You didn't know that. All right now. Then you ended up in the wilderness of prayer and sin and sin wandering around. But God brought you through. Yeah. 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 Part of this church is made up of the wilderness church. Yeah. But then you got a new generation sitting around here. They're the promised land. Yes, sir. You ain't built nothing. You ain't struck. You have fought for nothing. You just sell it ever something to tell them what they all that they all not do this and they all not do that. They all not do this and they all not do this and they all not do this and they all not do this. Somebody said promised land. Promise. See, it's hard for children who come in in the promised land yeah. with folks that already brought them into Canaan yeah. to appreciate what it took to get to Canaan. Yeah. So don't get upset. Just look at him and say something. Promised land. <laughs> yeah, man. Don't get upset. And you promised land folk who think that the, that the wilderness folk ain't doing what you think they ought to do, you got to understand that they've been through some stuff you ain't done to. So don't get upset, just say, wilderness. <laughs> Amen? But one thing about it, whether 
in your promised land or wilderness, you got to come together and sharpen your focus. Are you ready for days of good works? We certainly are. And if you would like to help our efforts, feel free to drop off backpacks, toiletries, hygiene products, water, sleeping bags, and any articles of clothing. This spring 16, come and help a loving church family that is committed to serving a hurting community. Days of good works.
But if this generation doesn't rise in me, then the generation after us is going to be adversely affected. What we do in the body of Christ, in the church of Christ, right now is not just about today. It's also about our tomorrow. That's coming on after us. Yes, Amen. I never will forget when I, I was privileged 15 years ago now to go to New York City uh, to preach where the very well known Dr. R.C. Wells has been the minister for 35 years back then, 38 years. Yeah. And uh, I had enough sense to know that I didn't need to be Dr. Wells. Right. I don't need to be Dr. Wells? No. Bro, let me tell you something. <laughs> you will never meet a gospel preacher who can extend the Savior's invitation by Dr. W. Washington. You will never find a great public debater and defender of the faith like Dr. R. C. You will never find a biblical exegete and storyteller on earth like Dr. Aurelius Crenshaw. You will never ever meet in your life a picture painter and an expositor of words like Dr. Richard Barclay. You will never meet a young defender of the faith any place in this world uh, like a Dr. Orpheus Haywood. But, but let me tell you something, can none of them preach like me? Shabazz being Shabbat. And I ain't saying I'm all that. I'm saying you can't be no better me than me. Right. Honey, when God made you, he broke them all. There's only one you. Often imitate. Never. What would it profit me? What would it profit you if we got all of the things we wanted? We, we got the right job. We got the right income. We got the right house. We got the right car. We got all of the things we wanted and then lost our soul. That's sad. And, 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 and so you really want to know what the Blessing Connection program is all about? It, it's about helping me. It's about helping you. It's about helping men and women 
be able to stand before God and hear God say in the life to come, well done. Don't you want to hear God say, well done? I want to hear God say, well done, our good and faithful servant. And so as you watch these videos of people getting baptized, understand what baptism really means. Baptism is really a symbolic act. It represents the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents the fact that I have given my life, I am being buried, I am being raised again to live a new life in Christ Jesus. It's, it's the opportunity for me to stand before God and hear God say, the substitution death of Jesus Christ, I no longer see you, I see him. It's Christ taking my place. It's not about my works. It's about the grace of God and that God sent his only begotten son. And so when you see someone get baptized, what they're really saying is that I've heard the good news that God sent his only begotten son. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I will confess with my mouth proudly that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I will repent of my sins. I no longer want to sit on the throne. I want Jesus to sit on the throne. I'm going down. I am getting baptized because I want to be able to say it's no longer I who lives in me. It's Christ who lives in me. That's what the passage is about in Romans chapter six, verse number four. Let me read it to you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we, that's you and I, we too may live a new life. Well, that's the plan of salvation. And for today, that's the blessing connection. I, I hope you enjoyed it. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to There's a purpose in life. Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship, 10 a.m., evening worship, 5 p.m. And on Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at Connect With Him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT. 